Hello everyone. As you know, material requirement planning is a process that translates the finished product requirements of the master schedule into time-phased requirements for sub-assemblies, component parts, and raw materials, working backward from the due date using lead times and other information to determine when and how much to order. To make MRP it is required to know the required number of items to assemble a certain number of end items. This can be achieved using the product structure tree and the quantity on hand from each item from the inventory record as explained in the previous video. If you would like to watch this video click on the above link. The next step to develop the material requirement planning MRP is to construct the assembly time chart to show material order points needed to meet the scheduled availability of the end item. Before continuing with this issue, subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. Let us now construct the assembly time chart for the end product with the shown product structure tree. The lead time of items and sub-assemblies are illustrated in this table. If an order for the end item is scheduled to be shipped at the start of week 14, what is the latest week that the order can be started and still be ready to ship on time? Construct a table that is in front of you with columns head is the week number. Because the end item is scheduled to be shipped at the start of week 14 so, locate this week at the far right. This means, that the assembly of the end item must be finished at the end of week 13 to be ready for shipping at the start of week 14. The lead time of the end product X is one week. So, going backward from the start of week 14, by one week means that the assembly of the final item X must start at the beginning of week 13. The next level in the product tree tells us that the two subassemblies B and C are required for the end item assembly. And the lead time for item B is two weeks. So, going backward from week 13 start by two weeks means that the assembly of the subassembly B must begin at week 11 start, while the lead time for item C is three weeks. So, going backward from week 13 start by three weeks means that the assembly of the subassembly C must begin at week 10 start. In the next level in the product tree, items D and E are required for the assembly of subassembly B. It is given that the lead time for item D is two weeks. So, going backward from week 11 start by two weeks means that the order of item D must be released at the beginning of week 9. For item E, its lead time is four weeks. So, going backward from week 11 start by four weeks means that the order of item E must be released at the beginning of week 7. The same for subassembly C. It needs items E and F to be assembled. Item E lead time is 4 weeks. So, going backward from week 10 start by 4 weeks means that the order of item E must be released at the beginning of week 6. For item F, the lead time is 2 weeks. So, Going backward from week 10 start by 2 weeks means that the order of item F must be released at the beginning of week 8. The last level reveals that item or material E is required for item D production. We know that item E lead time is 4 weeks. So, going backward from the beginning of week 9 by 4 weeks means that the order of item E must be released at the beginning of week 5. Now we finish the assembly time chart from which we can conclude that the latest week that the order can be started and still be ready to ship on week 14 is week 5. The number of the required items of the end product with the shown product structure tree was found in the previous video. The lead time of items and subassemblies is illustrated in this table. An order for the end item is scheduled to be shipped at the start of week 11. What is the latest week that the order can be started and still be ready to ship on time? Let us now construct the assembly time chart to answer this question. Because the end item is scheduled to be shipped at the start of week 11 so, locate this week at the far right. This means that the assembly of the end item must be finished at the end of week 10 
to be ready for shipping at the start of week 11. The lead time for the finished product is one week. So going back from the beginning of week 11, by one week means that compilation of the end element must start at the beginning of week 10. The next level in the product tree tells us that the three subassemblies B, C, and D are required of the end item assembly. And the lead time for subassembly B is two weeks. So, going backward from the start of week 10 by two weeks means that the assembly of subassembly B must start at the beginning of week 8, while the lead time for item C is three weeks. So, going backward from the start of week 10 by three weeks means that the assembly of subassembly C must start at the beginning of week 7, and the lead time for subassembly D is three weeks as well. So, Going backward from the start of week 10 by three weeks means that the assembly of subassembly D must start at the beginning of week 7. In the next level in the product tree, items E and F are required for the assembly of subassembly B. It is given that the lead time for item E is one week. So, going backward from the start of week 8 by one week means that the order of item E must be released at the beginning of week 7. For item F, its lead time is two weeks. So, going backward from the start of week 8 by two weeks means that the order of item E must be released at the beginning of week 6. The same for subassembly C. It needs items G and E to be assembled. Item G lead time is one week. So, going backward from the start of week 7 by one week means that the order of item G must be released at the beginning of week 6. For item E, the lead time is one week. So, going backward from the start of week 7 by one week means that the order of item E must be released at the beginning of week 6. The same for subassembly D. It needs items H and E to be assembled. Item H lead time is two weeks. So, Going backward from the start of week 7 by 2 weeks means that the order of item H must be released at the beginning of week 5. For item E, the lead time is 1 week. So, going backward from the start of week 7 by 1 week means that the order of item E must be released at the beginning of week 6. The assembly time chart is finished. Now we can conclude that the latest week that the order can be started and still be ready to ship on week 11 is week 5. Once we find the required number of items to assemble a certain number of end items and construct the assembly time chart, the MRP can be created in the shown table. And this will be explained next video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video so press like and share it. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the alarm to be notified of the new videos. See you again.